You know, I've never seen an alternative energy parking spot. Doesn't mean that they don't exist elsewhere, but I have to say, coming here to the Autobahn building here in Los Angeles, it's a truly 21st century setting, and I see that the alternative energy parking sign is even a priority over the carpool. All right, is that alternative energy? Yes, sir. Is it? All right. Hey, a hybrid's okay here. You can park in the alternative energy parking spot. So we're now we have the privilege of Willie James arriving. And Willie James, uh, good to see you again. You know, it's a pleasure to link up with you because of you. We're able to be at this spot. So let me just be sure. Yep, okay. It's a clean air vehicle. Okay, you got permission to park in the alternative energy parking spot. Okay, thank you. All right, in the meantime, um, we have the opportunity to explain a little bit to folks about this uh, location. How'd you get involved? Well, I got involved primarily because of my background in renewable energy as well as I was a, a planner for the city of Los Angeles and I uh, got involved with solar energy installation. Okay. So I tell people that I have a PhD in what not to do in renewable energy yeah. because we were 20 years ahead of our time. Right, so for this a setting to occur was really the manifestation of everything you've been working for? Absolutely. Okay. This building here, the Audubon Center at DevSpark, yeah. is totally off the grid. Uh, it's 5,000 square feet. It's the first LEED Platinum building in the U.S. LEED be in being the highest level of uh, greenness. Yeah. This building here does not have any electricity from DWP. Department of Water and Power Department for people nationally. Yes. They would know different Depart names of utilities, <laughs> right? Right. And there's no gas line from Southern California Gas. Right. And there's no sewer connection. Okay. Everything is treated on site, and this is where the sewer right here is so the building was constructed with some original vision and you must have some pride in looking back on how people came together with such a uh, unique thought about doing something really 21st century uh, absolutely and I give credit to the Audubon uh, Society for having the vision with the idea of what they had leaving uh, the least amount of carbon footprint on this earth right and this building uh, includes a lot of recycling materials as well as solar energy and energy efficiency. If you can imagine that we can cool the desert with solar energy. So you're utilizing the heat of the sun, oh, or yeah, the to, solar energy of the sun, to, heat to, the water, to cool. Yeah. Uh, to and cool. No, it's great. And I must tell you, but before we walk in, because I'm seeing the Audubon yeah. Center at Debs yeah. Park, let me ask you, uh, I yeah. skipped by. You say this is then where the there's no sewer. So what's going on over here? Is there well, a the, tank? The, the, it's a sewer uh, treatment center. And the waste stream is being uh, really processed with microfilters as well as UV rays. And okay. this facility here, uh, is there something the, to see? The wastewater uh, treatment yeah. uh, can be used uh, for irrigation. So and how is it working? Is something's coming in here well, and being the gray water and the black water totally comes in here. Okay, directly. Directly. And there's some processing and, and that goes on. There's a process. There's three uh, stage of process of UV rays as well as microfilter uh, that cleans the water. So UV rays are being used here? Yeah. And, and the idea was that eventually the wastewater stream would go back into the, the toilets. Okay. So what are we looking at here? Well, these are the uh, containers that hold, hold to the processing plants. There's okay. three, sta three or four stages. So this is a self-contained processor right. for waste management. And, and when you look at the the whole uh, issue of water, it's one of the most critical elements that we can look at because uh, we're running out of water. And when you look at the reservoirs in back of Lake Powell and Lake Mead, that is really a dangerous situation. And sure. with the uh, peripheral canals, as well as the reduction of the snowpack yeah. in the high Sierras, we are in deep trouble. So the idea here is to not use drinking water for flushing and what have you. Basically, when you think about the consumption of, uh, they, they allocate 100 gallons per person for right. a family for 400 gallons. Yeah. But when, when you look at the, uh, the water consumption, only about 5% is used for human consumption. Okay. The rest is flushing and water. So we don't need to have this drinking water to use for everything. Right. We're wasting it, water. It's, it's wasting water. Okay. It doesn't make sense. And so. this then exemplifies one step toward that solution. Right. And when you look at the future, I think the future is all distributed wastewater treatment system right. rather than having it all flushed into the main sewer line, yeah. going to Hyperion, right. processing it and yeah. dumping it in the ocean. Right. So, so you're, we you're demonstrating here yes. the solution. Yeah. That could be used for uh, irrigation, agriculture, 
and even later on processing for drinking right uh, because you can do it with solar a uh, distillery yeah uh, in terms of the the waste the water. next step yeah the next okay. step now as we enter here I see architecturally it's even pretty handsome but I have to say by the way that Willie as you pull in in your official alternative energy energy vehicle and have the qualification to be in there. I must let folks know that if you can just give a little background on how you met Les, I'm here because of you. How did you discover Les? I actually met Les at a meeting that I was invited to here about a year or so ago. And uh, I, I was fascinated uh, with this facility as well as fascinated with Les's background. Right. And uh, since then, he has been sort of like a mentor. I, I, that's probably the best way to yeah. put it. Especially it's in terms of green technology. Sure. And, and I, you're I, very I'm, much into that. I'm your company, your organization is? is green Tech Ventures. Okay. And so this is right down your alley. Right down my alley. Okay. Yeah, right down my alley. Right down your waterway. Right down my <laughs> waterway. Yeah, and I love it. Yeah. Not only does this demonstrate the future, but it, it serves as a role model because of the Platinum LEED. Now, for people that don't know, help us out with that acronym, LEED Construction. It's a leadership in energy and environmental design that the U.S. Green Building Council established. So this is the top of the pyramid. Yeah. And it was the, the bottom of the pyramid yeah. on the energy demand, the, the, the top the, of the pyramid the, on energy quality, that's, right? That's right. As we look at the building from here going forward, what are the highlights you want people to see? What can we share with others? I, I think the highlight is that this building can be anywhere in the world tomorrow, like in the middle of Africa or in Afghanistan. The same structure yeah. in the middle of a desert? In the middle, middle of the desert. Okay, good. And this is uh, really a fabulous uh, opportunity to make that kind of connection. Okay. So when you look at uh, where this building is located... In the By the way, the electricity that we're seeing in this room is off-grid. Yeah, it's all, uh, it's all from solar energy. Okay. And they use energy efficiency uh, okay. materials. But th this is a good map to show you in terms of, this is about 350 acres of parkland in the city of Los Angeles, and the Audubon Center is here. This is where we are. Uh, it's about seven acres of land that was donated for the Audubon Center to be developed. Now, when I first pulled up, I think it was off camera, that you explained that the Audubon Center is because of the bird society, the Audubon yeah, Society. The Audubon society. They're the leaders behind yeah, they're, this. They're the ones that have created this whole center. Okay. And it really is an educational center for the for the future Audubon leaders with the younger community becoming involved in a, the, the natural environment. Uh, they learn about this building, which is what we call a bioclimactic architecture, right. looking at all of these different applications. Like, for example, this pillar is filled with uh, waste from the the fly ash waste composition. Fly is, ash? What's yeah, fly ash? Fly ash is from the coal oh, okay. uh, burning fire plant. It's very toxic and it's very difficult to get How do you, How is it captured? They like a tons. particulate trap maybe? Yeah. On the uh, they, they have all of this uh, fly ash storage. So it's, it's the really idea of capturing a negative yeah. and turning it into a structure. Right. That's part of it. Okay. Now this one here, they turned the uh, gun from uh, LAPD PD that collected it. Yeah to the rebars for this. Uh, so the gun metal from weapons converted from right. a dangerous thing into a productive Absolutely. construction. So the reinforced iron well, rebar this, yeah, inside rebar, this is yeah. former weapons. Yeah, and that, that was really a unique kind of okay. thing here. And many of these things are recycled materials. That they so use. again, sunflowers for they chemists. They use uh, for wall boards as well as uh, they use uh, wheat boards, okay. so there were a lot of things that uh, were incorporated. So everything here exemplifying yeah. again the... And how you can recycle and reuse right. and uh, reinvent this. What about the concrete here? This is just traditional concrete. Yeah, I, I'm not too sure about okay. that. But again, these are made from fly ash. Yeah, fly ash okay. and cement. Okay. And that makes it very, very okay. valuable. So Beautiful when, setting. When you look at uh, bringing the, uh, the, the people from, say, Africa here, the many guests that I brought up, yeah. they can't believe that this thing is off the grid and it could be located in the bushes. Yeah. You know. Right. But well, you have we, to have water as a source somewhere. Yeah, but you can pump it from the ground. Okay. You know, there's a lot of water. Right, right. It's just but a matter of digging The idea out. of being completely off grid is yeah. the point. That yeah. This is solar energy yeah. and solar water energy. reclamation or recycling. Right. Recycling as well as recycling of a lot of <coughs> materials for building. Yeah. Now, if you look into the restrooms, you would think that in a solar village, 
I mean, you think of an outhouse. Yeah. In you know, I mean. Right. Cooking, Which you'd uh, expect yeah, on a low right, on a, on a, a but, low energy yeah. facility. And Here. So, uh, when I have a, well, I'll show you the, the restroom that could be located in Africa. Yeah. You know, these are all nicely. Uh, it's not an outhouse. It's a fully equipped restroom. Right. And. Uh, before it was, uh, well, they were thinking of using a waterless latrine, but the city did not approve it at that time. Right. So, so you would have that? Yeah. So you would recommend that yeah. today? Uh, okay. something recommended. But these are low, low volume yeah. problems. And then this is dual flushing toilets. What you say, a dual flushing? Yeah. Oh, exactly. you have two levels, yeah. one for full, one for half. Right. So a two-speed gearbox on a toilet. Right. Hey, Willie. That's a that's a kind of a car guy kind of thing. You know, a two speed toilet. Right, two speed toilet. You know. In addition to being part of a park, this is showcasing a beautiful setting. You say you have weddings and yeah, weddings and meetings and uh, uh, conventions. We have many of these forums up here, and uh, people are amazed in terms of when you really have a say discussion on sustainable development, mm -hmm. and you have it in an auditorium. Yeah, it doesn't register. Right here, but it if does. If you come here and you know, and you see all this thing that's totally out the grid. Yeah. It's totally different. I see now a little bit of the hardware, yeah. and you've, you've made this building look so conventional that it, it doesn't give away the fact that it's very different. Okay. Let's see the kitchen. The kitchen? The kitchen. Is it high-tech? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it has dishwasher. It has a microwave, microwave. an off-grid microwave. Off-grid microwave. Uh, freezer. Yeah. It's and powered by solar electricity. Yeah. Okay. And then you have a dishwasher here. So really, so far you're showing me things that are pretty much conventional. Yeah. It's the idea that you have a conventional right. looking room. You have all the amenities right. without the, the uh, without being on the electrical grid. Of you can have little uh, meetings here. The carpets are uh, made out of agave. What's agave? Which is not, you know the uh, a plant that used for tequila. Oh, okay. Uh, they kind of the street them. So even when, even in a conservative them. meeting, there's a little festivity in here because <laughs> right. tequila carpet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That might be a good brand name. Yeah. To remember. Yeah. So. Have tequila carpet for your serious meetings. You know. Okay. Okay. So that. Still, okay. I don't yes. see anything that's unconventional. Okay. Okay. Except, I mean, I know that you know. I'm I'm trying to probe because Wait. there's the solar collector. There you go. The solar so. thermal collectors. But you know, you the you water. people are you're doing such a good job at, at disguising it. You're that looks like almost at a glance like a regular roof. Yeah. But yeah. it's actually every one of those is a solar collector. Yeah, it's a solar thermal heat pipe collector. Okay, so the water. That's, yes, that uh, that's what we install. Okay. But the idea is that that collector will create a higher temperature, like 250, right. 205 degrees right. Fahrenheit, right. which is good for absorbing cooling. Okay, so in in effect, we're not only capturing with those panels, right? Yeah. We're also absorbing heat so that the heat doesn't go into the roof of that building. Yeah. Yes, the panels there protects the roof of the building, the material, because it's facing south, yeah. where it really gets beaten up by the ultraviolet rays. So in this case, you're welcoming the sun's yes, rays. because it provides covering and a shade so it lasts longer, okay. but also it really provides another layer of uh, protection to prevent the room from heating. Right, so it's insulation and absorption. Insulation, yeah. Okay, so, so when you turn on hot water in that building, you're pulling it off the roof. Yes, and but basically it's used for running in the air conditioning system. Oh, really? And then, then the summertime is air conditioning, but the wintertime it's heating, space heating. So you have a... How's that run in the air conditioning system? Well, we have a facility back there. I can show you the okay. absorption cooling okay. system where they use lithium bromide.